okay? And Roman numeral eight is you add three to five, and there you go. So these are the Roman numerals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, and you'll see why I went over those, because in order to uh, apply sets to worldly problems, it's wise to label the regions with Roman numerals so that you can clearly understand um, or have a better idea as to what's going on uh, when requested to find various sets. All right, so those are called Roman numerals. You just have to know one through eight. Of course, this goes on forever, Roman numerals, uh, but those are the ones you need to know there. Okay, let's go back here. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, the number of elements that are in set A and not in set B uh, by subtracting the number of, uh, okay, so let me show you how to do this now. Two set Venn diagram. Okay, this is, suppose I call the set A and this set B. This is region one, region two, region three, and the universal set out here is region four. All right, region one is the set that consists of all elements that are only in set A, only in set A. Region two is the set consisting of elements that are common or in sets A and B. Region two is called the intersection of sets A and B. Region three is the set of elements that are only in set B. And region four consists of only the elements that are neither in set A or B. Region four, all elements that are neither in set A or B, okay? That makes sense there, those regions? Yes. All right, you want to, always want to label it that way there, okay? All right, here's an example. In two, 2021, there were 41 states that had some form of casino gambling in the state, 45 states that sold lottery tickets of some kind, and 38 states that had both casinos and lotteries. Draw a Venn diagram to represent the survey results and find how many states have only casino gambling, how many states have only lotteries, and then how many states have neither gambling or casinos. All right, so I have a question for you. How many sets are we going to need in our Venn diagram to address this problem? Two Four, or th three. Oh, three in the universal set, right? No, only two sets. You're only going to need one for uh, gambling, casino gambling, and one for lotteries. That's it. And then these, those will be embedded inside a universal set. Okay? Okay. So we're going to need two circles, one for casino gambling and one for lotteries. And those, of course, will be inside a rectangle. All right, so here we go. We start to build our Venn diagram here, and then we label the regions, region one, region two, region three, and region four. That's the order in which your author labels these regions when you have a two-set uh, Venn diagram here, okay? Region one will be what? The set that consists of only states that have what? Casinos. Region two consists of all the states that have both casinos and lotteries. Region three consists of the set of states that only have lotteries. And region four consists of all states that have neither casinos or lotteries. Is this making sense so far? Yeah, what does the C and the L stand for? What's that now? Oh, the C stands for casinos. L stands oh, lottery. for lotteries. Okay. okay. And <laughs> yeah. U is the universe. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, where we begin here, is, and it's very important how you begin, uh, to populate uh, the cardinalities of each of these regions, you always begin at the intersection, always at the intersection, and then you work from there. So I'll tell you what, uh, we're actually going to work through this word problem backwards. All right. You know where we're going to start? We're going to start with the fact that 38 states had what? Both casinos and lotteries. So 38 is going to go into what? The intersection. Make sense? Yes. All right. So that's where we put 38 here. So, you know, 38 is going to take up residence right here in this region number two here. All right. Then we read further backwards through the word problem here. 
Um, it says 45 states that sold lottery tickets, 45 states sold lottery tickets of some kind. So 45 states have some sort of a lottery. All right, now, 45 states have lotteries. So do I put 45 in region three? Anybody? Yes. Yeah, or you deduct 40, 38 from 45? The answer is no. We do not put 45 in region three because of the 45 states that have lotteries, 38 of those states have already been accounted for. Agree? Yeah. So you put seven for lottery. Got to be careful. Yeah. So the cardinality of region three, that's what this notation says here. The cardinality of region three is going to be 45 states that have lotteries minus 38 that have already been accounted for. Do you agree? The 38 states that have both lotteries and casinos. So it's 45 minus uh, 38. That seven. would be seven. So seven goes in region three. Do we understand this here so far? Yes. Okay. Let's go back. Continue to read backwards through the word problem. Now it says uh, continue to read backwards. Uh, 41 states had some sort of casino gambling. Okay. So do I put 41 in region one? The answer is no. No, because, all right, of the 41 states that have gambling, 38 have already been accounted for because 38 states have both cas casinos and lotteries. So 41 minus 38 means the cardinality of region one will be what? Three. Three. Three goes in region one. Does this make sense how we populated the cardinalities of these regions here so far? Yes. All right. Now, I have a question for you. How many states are there in the United States? 50. 50? Okay. Are there 50? Does anybody disagree? 50 states in the United was, States. I think it was a debate between 50 and 52, but I think it's 50. I think it's 52. I think it's 50. All right. Okay. I think but we might have to ask, ask Alexi or, or Alexa or Surrey or something, but I think there's 50. Um, you know, that's kind of scary. We live in the United States. We don't, <laughs> we don't even know how many states are in our union here. Surrey uh, says it's 50. 50. Yeah, because uh, it's stars on the flag. So it's 50, but I think they're not including Hawaii, possibly. Uh, no, yeah. actually, Hawaii is included. Uh, Hawaii oh, okay. and Alaska. Okay, so I have a question, ladies and gentlemen. Um, do I put 50 in Region 4? No, you're going to do 50 minus the... Uh, three. I mean, yeah. The cardinality of Region 4 is going to be 50 minus what? 45. The sum of all the other states we've accounted for already. Do you agree? 3 yeah. plus 38 plus what? 7. 7. So what does that give you when you dial that up on a, on a calculator here? What do we get here? Or maybe we don't need a calculator, correct? 48. 48 that'd state. be what, two? Yeah. Yeah, so region four is two. So there are two states that had neither casinos or lotteries. There's two states that have neither casinos or lotteries. Anybody want to take a wild guess as to what states those are? That have no form of gambling, you know, casinos or lotteries. I didn't know this until I read this myself. Hawaii. Hawaii is one of them. Isn't that bizarre? You'd think, you know, Hawaii. Alaska. A, a vacation resort. My gosh, you'd have casinos, Utah. right? Utah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. As it turns out, there's two states. It's Hawaii, and, and I didn't know that, and, and also Utah. Okay, Those are the only two states that don't have any casinos or lotteries of any kind. Um at least until yeah, up to this when this PowerPoint was constructed. I don't know if they changed since then, but uh, but yeah, I just find it kind of odd that you know Hawaii doesn't have any formal like casinos. That really boggled my mind. A big you know vacation resort, and, but uh, no casinos. Interesting. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, does it make sense how we populated this Venn diagram with the cardinalities? How we read backwards through that word problem? We started with the intersection first and read backwards. That's very important the way we went about it, okay? Now we can answer a whole bunch of questions. Uh, for instance, um, let's go back. What were some of the questions? It says, how many states have only cas casino gambling? <laughs> only casino gambling. 
There are how many states that have only casino gambling? Three. Three. All right. Uh, another question. How many states have only lotteries? Seven. Only, only, seven. seven. Seven states. Uh, another question. How many states have neither? Of course, that would be what? Two states. Correct? Two. How many states have both casinos and lotteries? 38. 38 states. All right. Any questions? How we uh, built a two-set di Venn diagram to answer the questions in this word problem here and how we went about it. We read backwards through the word problem. We started with the intersection. How did you get 50? What's that? How did you get that 50 again? 50 states in the union. Oh, okay. Going on the assumption there's 50 states in the union. Right. Um, yeah, I got you. you know, there's been some argument that um, like some of the states down in the, what, the, uh, the Caribbean were United States yeah. territories too or something? I don't know. We'll go on the assumption there's 50 states in the union. Okay. All right. Does that make sense how we did this problem? Any questions? About yeah. All right, this is a very typical problem you'll see like on Alex, like I'm going to a quiz or a future exam. Very typical problem, okay? All right, so that really um, is pretty straightforward. Uh, the key is you really want to kind of label your regions. They also help uh, to keep track of things there. And uh, this is just the solution to our problem. Um, I basically already walked through it there, okay? All right, so there you go. All right, here's another good example. Um, in a survey uh, published in the Journal of uh, the American Academy of Dermatologists, 500 people were asked by random telephone dialing whether they have a tattoo and or a body piercing. Of these 500 people, 79 reported having a tattoo only, 31 reported having a piercing only, and 151 reporting having at least one of the two. I got a question for you. What does it mean to say at least one of the two? At least one of the two. At least yeah, one out of two of them. It could be one or it could be what? Two. Two. That's right. So ladies and gentlemen, to say X is at least uh at least one would be saying X is greater than or equal to one. That inequality symbol means at least. X is at least one would suggest X is greater than or equal to one, which means X could be one, but X could also be something bigger than one. Okay. All right. Draw a Venn diagram to represent these results and use your diagram to find the percentage of respondents um, that have a tattoo, that have a piercing, that have both, and that have neither. Okay. All right. So how many sets are we going to need for our Venn diagram here? Three. Well, including the, the universal set, we'll have three, correct? But we only need two, two, two circles. So One, are we going to always just have two? Well, not always. There will be some when we have three, okay? But this one's only going to require two circles. One for those that have what? Tattoos. And one for those who have what? Body piercings. Make sense? And of course, those will be inside a rectangle, which represents the universal set. So let's see if we can begin to put this together here. Um, well, they just basically jump right into the frying pan. Okay, so uh, I got a question for you. Where would we begin with this word problem after we draw our, our, our Venn diagram here with two sets here? And in fact, so say, what's that? Always begin with the what? The intersection. 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 That's right. Always want to try to begin with the intersection here. Okay, so tattoos and body piercings. All right, so this is how I built my Venn diagram to get me started. I have two circles. One for tattoos and one for body piercings. And of course, I got the universal set and I labeled my regions. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's begin to populate these regions with their appropriate cardinalities. To do that, we go back and read uh, the word problem kind of like backwards, okay? So let's see if we can do that. Um, it says, well, now wait a minute here. Uh, 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes, okay, normally always try to start with the intersection. But sometimes in the word problem, they don't actually indicate explicitly what the intersected value is. So sometimes we may have to, you know, uh, kind of work uh, around that. Because I don't, it doesn't say like, you know, how many people of the 500 have what? Both. Do you agree? It's not saying that anywhere in here. So we might have to kind of like uh, go a little bit further back in the word problem to begin here. Uh, let's see. It says 31 reported having a what? A piercing only, correct? 31 had a piercing only. So where would I put 31 in what region? A piercing only, body piercing only. In three. three. 31 goes in region three, correct? 31 yes. only had a body piercing only. So we'll start there. Now let's go back further. It says uh, 79 reported having only a tattoo. So 79 would go in what region? Only a tattoo. In one. Region one. Making sense so far? Are we getting to chip away at this? All right. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Now it says 151 reported having what? At least one of the two. 151 of the 500 respondents reported having at least one of the two, either a tattoo and or a body piercing, 151. So I have a question for you. Would I put 151 in region one? No. No, makes no sense. Would I put it region three? No. 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 Makes sense. So how are we going to use this 151? Well, I'll tell you what. It's going to help us put uh, an appropriate number into the intersection here. Right, so what would be the cardinality of our intersection uh, region two here? Well, we know 151 total people have had what? At least what? One or the other. One or the other, at least uh, one of these, okay? So it seems to me that I could take the 151 and subtract off the fact that I know that 79 only had tattoos and 31 only had body piercings, do you agree? Agree. Let's go like this. All right, so what does this give you when you go through the 41. Basement? 41. Now, so what's that 41 saying? That 41 saying, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, 41 of the 500 respondents had both what? A tattoo or a body piercing. Tattoos and body piercings. Makes sense how we derive that uh, cardinality of the intersected region, uh, region two there. I see that there. Okay, but how many people, you know, responded to this survey? There were totally, what, 500 people, correct? So what's the cardinality of region four? Well, it's going to be 500 total people minus the sum of all the people that have been accounted for. 79 plus 41 plus 31. And what does that give you? That'll give you the cardinality of region uh, four there. And when you go five, to two, what was that now? Five seventy two. Double no, it's got to be five hundred minus the sum of these. Uh, so add all these up and subtract from five hundred. Try that out again. Three forty nine. Three hundred and forty nine sounds better, and that would be the cardinality out here. Okay. So 349 of the 500 uh, people that were surveyed uh, said they have what? Neither what? Tattoo or body piercings, correct? Correct. Uh, now we can answer a bunch of questions now that we, uh, you know, properly have populated the regions here with their cardinalities. The question that's being asked here is uh, what? Find the percentage of respondents that have a tattoo the percentage of respondents that have a tattoo, not the number of respondents, but the percentage or the proportion of respondents that have a tattoo. Well, how many have a tattoo? 79. Oh, wait. What was that now? How many? 79? Do oh. we got to add the ones that's in this, that has a... Um... Yeah, so how many have, have, that's right. How many total do you have a tattoo? We got 79 plus what? Plus 41. 41. Yep. So it's gonna be 79 plus 41. 120 divided by 
Amanda Bond. 500 total respondents. Agree? Yep. So this will be 120 divided by, is that, yeah, 120? Yeah, 120. Get on your calculator and dial it up. It'll be a decimal. Tell me what decimal that's going to be. 120 divided by 500. 0. 0.24. 0. 0.24. And then how do you convert a decimal to a, uh, a percentage? You multiply it by 100%. Or you uh -huh. decimal point it, places to the right. And it's 24%. 24%. You got your answer. 24% of the respondents have what? Have a yeah. tax base. Make sense how we answer that question. 24% of the 500 people respond that responded to the survey have a tattoo. Okay. Now, uh, another question was, um, what percent have a piercing, a body piercing? So what percent have uh, a body piercing here? Well, how many do we have body piercing? That'd be 41 plus what, 31? 31. Divided by the total number of people that were surveyed, and ultimately you'll multiply that by what? 100%, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so what's this going to be? It's going to be 72 divided by 500. That's going to give you a decimal. And what decimal does that give you? Uh, 72. 0.14. And as a percent, that'll be about what? 14%. 14%. There we go. 14% of the respondents have uh, a body piercing. All right. Next question was, uh, what percent have both a tattoo and body piercing? Well, how many have both a tattoo and a body piercing? That would be 41 divided by 500. And what does that give you as a decimal? 41 over 500. 0 0.082. 0 0.082, and then convert it percent, that'd be like 8.2 what percent? Or you could probably round it off, just call it about 8%, okay? All right. Make sense how we're answering these questions? Um, what percent have neither? Neither. Well, that's going to be 349 divided by what? 500. 500. As a decimal, what's 349 divided by 500? 0. 0.698. 0. 0.698. Gosh, that's approximately about what? 70% roughly? Yeah. Pretty 69. darn close. 69.8%. Pretty close. Yeah. I'm going to say approximately 70%. That'll be okay. All right. Does this make sense how we... Uh, did this word problem here and answer these questions. Is it making sense how we're populating the cardinalities of these sets? Yes. Okay. Uh, with practice, you'll get a lot better at these. Uh, just requires a little bit of practice. And this is the solution in the PowerPoint. If you missed it, it's on Canvas for your viewing. Okay. It's all there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this next one requires three sets, not two, but three sets. And as you would guess, it becomes a little bit more involved because you just have more regions. You just have more, uh, more things to kind of keep track of. A criminal justice major is studying the frequency of certain types of crimes in a nearby county. He studies the arrest records of 300 inmates at the county jail, specifically asking about drug-related offenses, domestic violence, and theft of some sort. Okay, there's a hint. What are your three circles going to be labeled? Three circles, one for drug-related drug related offenses and domestic violence and, and, theft. and theft. Exactly. Three circles are needed here. He finds that 194 had been arrested for theft, 210 for drug offenses, 170 for domestic violence. In addition, 142 had arrests for both theft and drugs, 111 for both drugs and domestic violence, 91 for both theft and domestic violence, and 45 had been arrested for all three. Draw a Venn diagram to rest, represent these results and find the number of inmates that have been arrested for only, they just ask you a whole bunch of questions. But obviously, the first thing you have to do is draw the what? You got to draw the Venn diagram. Do you agree to have a chance at this? And you got to populate the regions with their um, correct cardinalities. So we're going to need three sets here, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to try to draw this thing here. I'm going to have three overlapping circles here. 
And I'm going to label, let's see, the first one is drug-related offenses. Um, let's see. Let me see what I got. Uh, I'm just going to use D for drugs. Uh, let's see here. Then we had what? Domestic violence. I'll use DV for domestic violence. Uh, and theft. I'll use T for theft. Okay. So here we go, Liz. I'm, I'm starting to put together my Venn diagram to address this situation here. I'm going to label the regions this way. Region one are those that had just drug offenses. Region two are those who have had drug of offenses and domestic violence uh, offenses, but not theft offenses, correct? Region three are those that just had drug, uh, excuse me, domestic violence offenses. Uh, one, two, three, uh, four. Region four is the number of people or inmates that had uh, uh, drug offenses and theft offenses, but not domestic violence offenses. Region five are those who have had what? All three offenses, do you agree? Drugs, domestic violence, and theft. That's the intersection of all three circles right there. Region six is the region consisting of those who had domestic violence and theft offenses, but not drug offenses. Region seven are those who had just theft offenses. And region eight out here, Roman numeral eight, would be those inmates that had neither any of these offenses, correct? They were in for some other reason. That makes sense. So I labeled the regions here with, with the Roman numerals. Okay. Now we're going to begin to populate this by reading backwards to our word problem. We always try to do the intersection first. So help me out here. What do we what number goes in where first? Let's see. It says 45 had been arrested for all what? All three. Where does 45 go in what region? Five. That's right, right here. 45. Had all three offenses. Okay. We continue to read backwards through the word problem now. Uh, the next number was 91. 91 for both theft and what? Domestic violence. 91 for theft and domestic violence. But ladies and gentlemen, of the 91, how many have been accounted for? Of the 91 that had uh, domestic violence and theft, how many have been accounted for? 45, do you agree? So the cardinality of region six here would be 91 minus 45. And what does that give us? 91 minus 45. 46. Thank you, 46. 46 goes in region six here. So 46 inmates had domestic violence offenses and theft offenses, but not drug offenses, correct? All right. Let's go read on backwards a little bit more into this problem now. After the word number 91, we read backwards and we hit the number 111. 111 uh, for both drugs and domestic violence. 111, 111 for drugs and domestic violence. That would be this. But of the 111, how many have been accounted for? 45. 45. So the cardinality of region two would be 111 minus 45. And what does that give us? 66. 66. So 66 inmates had drug and domestic violence offenses, but not theft offenses. Okay. See how we're populating the numbers, reading backwards through the word problem here. All right. Let's read backwards some more. The next number we hit from 111 is 142. 142 had arrests for both theft and drugs. 142 for theft and drugs. That would be in the intersection right here. But of the 142, how many have been accounted for? 45, do you agree? So therefore, the cardinality of region five, four is going to be 142 minus what? 
45. 45. And what is 142 minus 45? 97. 97. 97 goes in region four here, 97. So 97 inmates had drug and theft offenses, but not domestic violence. Okay. We continue to read backwards to our word problem. So the next number backwards from 142 would be 170. 170 for domestic violence. Okay, 170 for domestic violence. All right. But ladies and gentlemen, of the 170 for domestic violence, how many have been accounted for? This, this, and this. Agree? So the cardinality of region uh, three is going to be equal to, uh, what was it again? 170? Okay. It'll be 170 minus those that have been accounted for domestic violence, which is 66. Plus 45 plus 46. Get on your calculator, dial it up. 13. Tell. 13. So 13 inmates only had domestic violence offenses only. Did not, and they did not have drug or uh, theft related offenses, only uh, domestic violence. Okay, good. All right, that's 170. We continue to read backwards through the word problem here. We run into number 210. 210 for drug offenses. But of, of the 210 drug offenses, how many have been accounted for? Well, 66, 45, and 97. So the cardinality of region one is going to be, um, oh, I can tell I'm getting, I'm getting old. I can't remember these numbers. I got to keep flipping back. Was it 210? All right, so 210 minus the sum of those have been counted for, which is 66 plus 45 plus what? 97. Get out of your calculator and dial that up and tell me how many two. inmates. Okay, so only two inmates had only what? Drug offenses. Only two. That's it. All right. We're getting there. And then... Um, 194 had been arrested for theft. Well, of the 194 that have been arrested for theft, how many been have been accounted for? Well, uh, what is it? 97 have been accounted for. 45 had been accounted for. And 46 have been accounted for. You know, to calculate, dial it up, tell me how many have only Six. theft. Offenses only six have theft offenses. Good. Are we done populating these uh, regions? Uh, yes or no? Yes, for those ones, but we still have to do the eight. What? Yeah, we got to do region eight. Very good. We're not done. And how do we do region eight? Well, we need to understand that how many inmates were uh, assessed here or surveyed totally. 300, correct? So therefore, the cardinality of region uh, 8 is going to be 300 minus what? All the other ones that have been accounted for, correct? So ladies and gentlemen, we got to subtract from 300 all these other cardinalities. Uh, 2 plus 66 plus 13 plus 97 plus 45 plus 46 plus 6. Do you agree? Okay. All these have been accounted for. Get out of the calculator and dial that up and tell me how many inmates uh, had none of these offenses. Six, seven regions have been accounted for. Okay. So what does that number come out to? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. So twenty-five inmates uh, did not have drug. Uh, and did not have domestic violence and did not have theft offenses. They had some sort of other offense, okay? 
All right. That makes sense how we populated those regions with the cardinalities. We read backwards through the problem. Now we can answer a bunch of questions. The first question is this. How many inmates had only drug-related offenses? Only drug. Two. two. Only two. You see, once you get these this populated, your Venn diagram, you can fly through these questions. They're, they're very easy. But if you don't populate this, these regions correctly, it's, it's going to be very difficult to do these problems. B, how many inmates had theft and domestic violence, but not drugs? Theft and domestic violence, but not drugs. Not drugs. 46 That's and 46. 46, 46, right here. 46, do you agree? Had theft and domestic violence, but not drugs. So that'd be 46. All right, next one is um, theft or drugs. Oop, careful here. Theft or drugs. Ladies and gentlemen, or to be in a set that says theft or drugs, you have to be in just at least one of the sets. So you could be in a set that just has theft or just a set that just has drugs, or you could be what? In the set, the intersection of those two sets. So... How many have had theft or drugs? Well, that's a lot. That would be six plus what? 97, correct? Plus what? 45 plus 46 plus what? Two. There's your answer to the number of inmates who had theft or drugs. You got to add all these numbers up here. All right. So what does that count? Oh, it's going to be something like... Um, 196. 196. Thank you. All right. The next question is, how many inmates had none of these offenses? We would say 25. 25. Any questions how we did that problem there? Is this making sense here? How we're doing these problems? Uh, I just had I just had one question on yeah. the uh that um three hundred. Okay. For the twenty five. So the universal was twenty five because of the problem, correct? Yeah, because there were three hundred inmates that were surveyed totally, and of the three hundred <laughs> inmates surveyed, we accounted for what seven of the regions already. Do you agree? Two right. Plus this number, 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 plus this number. And so you want to subtract the ones that have been accounted for off from 300, which leaves 25 of the inmates, okay, have not been accounted for in any of our seven regions. Gotcha. So Thank 25 you. has to go out there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? How we did this problem here? All right. This is a typical problem. Um, you know, obviously it takes more time to do a three set Venn diagram because you just have more regions to account for, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, obviously two setters are a lot quicker than three setters, okay? Uh, but once you get it populated, you know, you can really kind of fly through your questions. It's really not that difficult uh, to get through the, uh, the uh, questions uh, there. Okay, uh, let's see. So that one's done. And this is just re-emphasizing the problem that I just did. This is just the complete solution here, okay? Uh, let's see here. Yep, and it does look like we populated our, our regions correctly, does it not? Yes, they just didn't add the Roman numeral. 97, yeah. Yeah, they did not add the Roman numerals inside. You're correct. But, um, you know, it's kind of weird because they did back here. Didn't, well, they did here, correct? So it's like, well, what happened to them? But whatever. We get the idea, right? Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what time it is. 118. Okay. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, do you think that you might
you think you might be up to the task to do this one here? Or do you do want to do a two-setter before we do this one for classwork? What do you think? Do a two-setter. Do a two-setter. <laughs> okay. Because this looks like climbing a mountain here right away. All right. So uh, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, see if we can maybe do a, um, a, a two-setter. We'll, we'll come back to that one. All right. And we'll we'll deal with it, but uh, let's go to our textbook and see if we can have some fun with maybe a two setter in section two point four first. So we will go into our textbook and try to do a couple of problems out of two point four here. As always, you'll feel free to look down through the section. Uh, there are sometimes things that are missed on the PowerPoint that might be in the section, okay? Uh, I'll leave that up to you. This is not required to look through the section, but I think it, you know, is also maybe just helpful just to go through it kind of quickly, just make sure nothing was missed. They give you some good examples in here too. I got a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. When we first uh, register for Alex, it's like a little test or something. That, I don't know. It's yeah, like it's called the initial no the initial knowledge check. Um, unfortunately, you have to might you might have to do a couple of the problems on it to unlock the homework to make the homework visible. Okay, but we're not graded for those type. For no, those you're types. not graded for the initial knowledge check. So it's just a okay. thing of just getting through some of it so that the homework will be unlocked for the rest of the semester. Okay. Okay. And then it's just the homework and the quizzes and the exams that are on Alex. That's it. Uh, okay. Just making um, sure. Yeah. Um, let's see what's going on here. Okay. So, uh, ladies, I would, I would like you to do number two here, or we'll call this classwork number one. I want you to build a two set Venn diagram and populate the regions with their appropriate cardinalities based on how this word problem reads. Um, now, to get us started here, you're going to obviously need, what, two circles, and one circle you're going to call what? You're going to call maybe your your computer science major circle, and the other one may be your, what, math circle, okay? And then you'll populate your regions here and then answer these questions. Go ahead and do that. We'll call this classwork number one. All right, classwork number one.
This one wasn't too bad. This one was simple. Okay. Um, this one is pretty straightforward, ladies and gentlemen, compared to where we've been. Um, notice that seven were both computer science and math majors. Um, there were a total of 12 computer science majors. So 12 minus seven leaves five that only majored in computer science. There were 18 math majors of which seven have been accounted for. So only 11, 11 were only math majors. 25 total students surveyed, so 25 minus uh, those that have been accounted for, 5 plus 7 plus 11, leaves you with two students that were neither computer science or math majors. Did anybody uh, else get that population correct there? I did. Yes. Now we can answer a whole, whole bunch of questions here. For instance, question A, how many students were majoring in only math? 11. You would say 11, correct? Correct. B, how many students were not majoring in computer science? <clears throat> how many were not majoring in computer science? 13. Eight. Yeah, yeah 13. 13. There's going to be 11 that were only math majors plus two that were neither. The answer is 13. 11 plus two is 13. Students were not majoring in computer science. <laughs> All right. And another question is, um, how many students were not math or computer science majors? Two. two. Answer is just two there. Okay. All right. So that one was pretty easy, wasn't it? Not too bad, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, two setters are usually pretty, not really that involved. It's those darn three setters that are a little bit more involved. Okay. Let's see. We already did one like that. Uh, okay. All right. So um, maybe you could try um, number five. We'll we'll roll this into classwork number one also. Uh, number five. Careful, they're asking for percentages here in the end. Be careful of that. It says, out of 20 students taking a midterm psychology exam, 15 answered the first of two bonus questions. Uh, 13 answered the second bonus question. Uh, and two didn't bother with either one. See if you can. So um, I have a question for you. How many circles are we going to need here? How many sets are we going to need? Three. Well, including the universal set, we'll need three. But it seems like as far as circles are concerned, we're only going to need how many circle sets? Two. Two. One for the what? The first bonus question and the other for the what? Maybe the second bonus question. Do you agree? All right. So go ahead and see if you can build a Venn diagram to answer these questions here. Be careful. They're asking for percentages. We'll call this part of Classwork
Can we turn my light on, please? Hmm? Turn my light on, please.
All right, so um, this problem here, did anybody find this, I don't know, somewhat vague, this problem here, a little bit confusing? A little I, bit. Did. I did. I thought it was just me. <laughs> it was little bit. No, a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute. I wrote it over my head. I, <laughs> I forgot it was presented here, so I had to go back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm reading this. I, I read it about five times here, and um, I'm, I'm a little bit mystified here. Uh, Me too, because how can... We All I know for sure is that two did not bother answering either question. You agree? So two goes in the universal set. It's not one yes. of those. That, well, that's really all I know. I'm mystified here. Um, my question is, how many answered both? Nobody. It don't say. I mean, 18. When I read, like, when it says 15 answered the first of two bonus questions, yes. how are you interpreting that? Because I'm interpreting it. I mean, there's actually two different ways you could interpret this. You could interpret that as, when you think about it, could you interpret it as being like 15 uh, yes. belong in the bonus question one circle total? That's what I was thinking. Some of which are at the intersection. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. None or is in the intersection at all. that are out here? Is it just 15 that are out here? So just answered only bonus question one. That's a little vague. I don't vague. Because that could be somewhat interpreted a couple of different ways here, you think. And, you know, to say 13 answered the second bonus question, okay, I understand that, but does that mean that only 13 answered the second bonus question or some of the 13 also answered bonus question one? And if so, how many did they answer also bonus question one? So I find this to be, I don't like this question. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> uh, um, does anybody beg to differ with me and think it is really crystal clear here? As to I thought it was no, no, no I all. couldn't get it. I didn't understand it because there was no intersection to me. It's very difficult to determine the intersection here. I, I'm finding it very difficult. I uh, didn't think there was one at one point. I thought there was no intersection. You know, uh, you know what the answer is. I'll tell you what the answer is. The number that you know did both questions was 10. Now, how in the world are you going to deduce 10 in there? 15 answered bonus question one. So if this is 10 in here, then that would mean five go out here. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. yes. And if 13 answered bonus question two, then that means three goes out here. Did anybody get this? No. No. I mean, I'm scratching my head on this one. I, you know, I, I don't know how you, how do you deduce 10 answered both questions? I don't like that question. I'll tell you what, let's abandon it. Um, I don't like the way it's worded. <laughs> I think it's very confusing, and I won't give you one like that on um, on uh, like Alex or anything. So don't worry about that. Okay, now <clears throat> number six. Um, in a study of four hundred entrees served at seventy five campus cafeterias, seventy had less than ten grams of fat, but not less than three hundred fifty calories. 48 had less than 350 calories, but not less than 10 grams of fat. 140 had over 350 calories and over 10 grams of fat. Um, less than 10 grams of fat and less than 350 calories. Do we even know how many circles we would build for this thing here? Less than 10 grams of fat. Seems like it might be one circle. Do you agree? Yes. Uh, less than 350 calories, I would be gathering, let's see, would be maybe another circle, right? Less than 350 calories. That's the way I'm interpreting this here. So uh, let's see if we can uh, maybe put this together here. Uh, this is not a classwork problem. I'm gonna we're kind of work on this one maybe together a little bit here. So, so I mean that's the way I'm interpreting it. In a study of 400 entrees served, 75 camps cafeterias, 70 had less than 10 grams of fat, but not less than 350 
galleries, 48 less than 350, but not less than 350. Okay, so I'm going to have two circles. I'm going to have one that's less than 10 grams of fat. Less than 10 grams. And the other circle is less than what? Less than uh, 350 calories? Less than 350 calories. And then I got my universal set out here. I'm thinking that my Venn diagram might be built like this for this problem. You know what I'm saying? I have a circle that is less than 10 grams of fat and less than 350 calories. Okay. Does anybody see that differently or not? Let's see if we can begin to populate this thing now. All right. Now, it says, I want to read it here, kind of like, uh, uh, let's see. 10 grams of fat here. Let's see. 70 of the 400 entrees uh, had uh, less than 10 grams of fat but not less than 350 calories, but not less than 350 calories. So, so that indicates to me that 70 would go in region one. Is that correct? Let me read that again, and you justify this in your mind. Is this correct to say the 70 goes in region one? 70 had less than 10 grams of fat, but not less than 350 calories. Do you agree 70 is in the right place? Yes. 70 had less than 10 grams of fat, but not less than 350 calories. I believe 17 is placed correctly. Now it says 48 had less than 350 calories, but not less than 10 grams of fat. So it seems to me that 48 would go what? In region three? 48 had less than 350 calories, yeah. but not less than 10 grams of fat. Is this making sense how I'm populating these so far? Okay. So we're off to a good start here. All right. So I put the 70 in the right place, and I also put the 48 in the right place. Now it said 140, 140 had over 350 calories. And over 10 grams of fat. All right, now look at here. 140 have had over 350 calories, so it does not belong in the less than 350 calorie circle. Do you agree? And over the 10 grams of fat, which means none of it belongs in the less than 10 grams of fat circle. 140 had over 350 calories and over 10 grams of fat. It seems to me, ladies and gentlemen, that that 140 would go in region what? Four? Isn't that correct? Let me read that again. It says 140 entrees had over 350 calories or greater than 350 calories and greater than 10 grams of fat. Do I have my 140 in the correct region? Yes. I believe I do, based on how that reads. Good. Now, hold the show. We still got to figure out how many of these entrees had both, what, less than 10 grams of fat and less than 350 calories. How are we going to figure that one out? How are we going to figure out the cardinality of region two? We know where the 70 to 48 and the 140 go. How are we going to figure out the cardinality of region two? What number have we not worked with yet? The 400. The 400. There were 400 entrees total. Do you agree that we're surveyed, right? And so therefore, we're, we're, that's, we're, going to, we're going to have to use the 400 to help us populate region two here. So region two, the number of entrees that had less than 10 grams of fat and less than 350 calories would be the 400 entrees surveyed minus the ones that have already been accounted for, namely 70 plus 48 plus 140. And what does that give us for the intersection of those two sets? Less than 10 grams of fat and less than 350 calories. 
Let's go through and do this. What does that give us? 258. 258 of the 400 entrees had the best of both worlds. It had less than 10 grams of fat and it had less than 350 calories. Oh, wait, minus the 400, it's 142. I oh, thought you were just this, adding those three together. I took 400 yeah. minus the sum of these. And what is it, 142? Yeah. 142. All right. Did any, can anybody else confirm that? 142 or not? Yes, yes you I can. All right. We'll put 142 in here. And I think we're in business now. Now we can answer some questions. Okay. So that one wasn't that bad, but you got to admit, we did not, we couldn't start with the intersection with this one because they never gave us the intersection. So some of these, okay, you might have to work in an unorthodox fashion. You might have to, you know, start with other numbers first before the intersection. Most of the time, we always try with the intersection first if we're able to do that. Okay. All right. Now, let we're going to ask ourselves some questions here. And the questions are, what percentage of entrees had less than 10 grams of fat? So the percent uh, that had less than 10 grams of fat, what percent had less than 10 grams of fat? Well, how many had less than 10 grams of fat? That would be 70 plus what? 142 divided by 400. All right. Uh, tell me what this is going to be for a decimal here. Two, is that 212 divided by 400, I believe? And what is 212 divided by 400 as a decimal? Point five. Point five three. Yeah, 0.53. So as a percent, that would mean... 5.3. Okay, as a percent, then it would be what? 53% of the entrees had less than what? 10 grams of fat, correct? <laughs> what percent had less than 350 calories? Percent. What's that? That 400. That four, I, can, I can't see the word problem, but did that 400 come from the word problem? Yeah, there's 400 entrees total that were surveyed. Okay, and That's of the 400, 212 had less than what? 10 grams of fat, correct? The 70 plus the 142. Okay. Right. Which is 53%. 53 it would be it would be 47 and a half percent. Or the other one? Yes. How many uh entrees had less than 350 calories? That'd be 142 plus 48. So that's 142 plus 48. And then that's going to be divided by the total number of entrees surveyed, which is 400. And you got what for a decimal? 0.4. 0.475. 75, and as a percent, this would be 47.5% of the 400 entrees yeah. had less than 350 calories. Um, what if I ask you this question? What percent had both less than 10 grams of fat and less than 350 calories? Percent that had both of both worlds. That would be 142 divided by what? 400. And uh, 0.355, which is 35 and a half percent. Um, enjoyed both worlds there, and of course, uh, it looks like all these percents uh, should add up to 100. Well, 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 hold on, hold on, be careful here. No, 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 they're gonna add up to larger than 100 percent. Why? Because we double counted what? These in right here, didn't we? In computing these, didn't we? We double counted the 142 in computing both these. 142 there and 142 there, correct? And because we double counted, these percents would add up to something larger than 100%. So be careful on that one. All right. You Are you ready for maybe a three circle one. Maybe we could go back to our, our PowerPoint presentation later on and maybe try this one. Now you're gonna need three circles here and what would be the three circles? Uh, okay. High blood pressure, high cholesterol and what? Smoking, agree? 
All right, so to get us started so that we're all on the same page, we're going to build a three-set Venn diagram. And um, this is how I want you to label these re regions here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and out here, region eight. Okay, so we're all on the same page. Just label them in that order. And as far as the sets are concerned, um, the three factors that attribute most to um, heart uh, attacks would be uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and smoking. Okay, I'm going to call this blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking. Okay, why don't we all label it this way that we'll all be on the same page. So we'll all know where, you know, we'll all see the numbers in the appropriate regions. There's nothing sacred in how we're labeling this. I mean, I could have called this the cholesterol circle, this the blood pressure, and this a smoking circle. And I could have labeled these Roman numerals in different ways. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer in the end if you do things correct. But so we're all on the same page. Why not just follow what I got here? Okay. Will you right. um, say what each of yours is labeled? I just can't see on the camera because it's not clear. Oh, it's not clear on the camera here? Okay, this first circle to the left is blood pressure. The circle to the right is cholesterol. And the circle below here is uh, smoking, S. So B, P, C, and S. And what are the Roman numerals in those circles? Um... Those that have only high blood pressure would be region one. Those that have high blood pressure and cholesterol only, but not smoking would be region two. Region three is out here. Those that have only cholesterol problems. Region four are those that have high blood pressure and smoking, but not cholesterol problems. Region five are those that suffer from all three, blood pressure problems, cholesterol, and smoking. Region six are those that suffer from uh, cholesterol and smoking, but not blood pressure. And region seven are those that just suffer from smoking, but not blood pressure and cholesterol. And region eight is out here in the universal set. Okay, that. Thank you. All right. Is this our classwork or no? We're just doing. Yeah, it's going to be together. classwork number two. So I'm going to go. Do we have this built correctly? Are we ready to go back to the problem now? Oh, one second. We have all this labeled correctly. Okay, so that's the way we want to build your Venn diagram, and I'll take you back to the problem. You can finish the problem. We'll call that classwork number two. So let me know when you get done labeling. <laughs> All right, we got these labeled correctly? Yeah. All right, ready to go back to the problem now? All right, there's the problem. I'm going to go to it, start populating the regions with their cardinalities, and then just answer all these questions. We'll call this classwork number two.
This is confusing me. Uh, just try to do the best we can to see if we can do something with it. Uh, you might have to, you may not have an intersection here, so you might have to, you know, start with some other numbers and kind of work around. Uh, let's see if we can just try, try to get anything done with this. And in fact, they're not giving you the intersection. So you're going to have to start, uh, for instance, I'll give you a little hint. 23 smoked and had high cholesterol, but not what? High blood pressure. So what region would that go in? 23 smoked and blood pressure, but not, I'm sorry. 23 smoked and had high cholesterol, but not high blood pressure. Six. Now we'll go in six. Region six, you are correct. In region six, you put 23. And there's your hint. And I'll just continue to work backwards through the problem. I don't see a 26. I see a 23. Yes, 23 goes in region six. Because mm -hmm. that's 23 that smoked and had high cholesterol, but not high blood pressure. That goes in region six. Blood pressure. Mom. This is confusing.
I'm not getting this. I'll uh, just hold on. I'll I'll show it. I'll show ourselves how to negotiate this. This one's a little bit more complicated than the three setter we had before. It is. Okay, uh, obviously the biggest challenge to this problem by far is how to populate the cardinalities of all the regions. And this one's got a twist to it, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a, a, this is a very challenging three-setter on the PowerPoint. Um, I don't think I'm gonna give you one quite this challenging. I'll give you a three-setter, but it won't be quite as challenging with the little uh, wrinkle that's thrown into this one. But let me kind of talk ourselves through how to populate the cardinalities here. The first thing we're looking at is that number 23. Um, you would want to start there. It says 23 uh, had smoking and high cholesterol, but not high blood pressure. Okay. So 23 had smoking and cholesterol, but not high blood pressure. That goes in region six. That was pretty easy. Do you agree? The populate. Yes. That was the easy one. All right. Now, what else did it say here? Then I backed up and then it said uh, 159. I'll show you the order in which I'm reading this. Here. So we go backwards from the 23 to the 159. It says 159 had high blood pressure and cholesterol that didn't smoke. So high blood pressure, cholesterol, but no smoking. So where would that go? Region two. Region two. High blood pressure, cholesterol, but no smoking. That was pretty reasonable to put in there, correct? That was easy also. All right. Continuing to move on backwards. Three. It says there were 300 total with high cholesterol. 300 total with high cholesterol. We're not ready for the 370, are we? We're not ready for this because we don't know how many just had high cholesterol, only high cholesterol. we got to read, actually skip over to 370 for now and go back to the 93. 93 had only high blood pressure. So 93 would go where? Only region high, one. Yeah, region one, 93. Okay. That's pretty obvious. And then it says 36 had only smoking. 36 goes in what region? Seven. Seven. That's pretty obvious. And then it says 62 had only cholesterol. What region? Only cholesterol. Region three. three, 62. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can back up and go with that 370. You said 370 had cholesterol. So of the 370 that had high cholesterol, how many, okay, uh, would populate region five? So I took 370 minus those that have been accounted for already. 23 plus 62 plus 159. That leaves me with 126 for the intersection of all circles. Did anybody at least get the 126 for you? I didn't. So what that what what is that middle thing? I mean they had R3, right? Yeah. What's that now? The 126 when they had blood pressure, high cholesterol, and smoking. yes, that's right. 126 uh page, uh victims uh suffered from high blood pressure, cholesterol, and what smoking. Okay, 126. And that was obtained by the fact that we knew that 370 had cholesterol, high cholesterol. And of the 370, how many were accounted for already? 23, 62, and 159. You see that? That's why I subtracted it off. You get the one. Yeah, but I don't get how the blood pressure and the smoking got to do with the 126 number. High cholesterol automatically mean they got both blood pressure and smoking? Yeah. high. If you got high cholesterol, you could have all of these. You could have what? Blood pressure and cholesterol only. You could have uh, smoking and cholesterol only. You could have only cholesterol, or you could have what? All three of them, cholesterol, blood pressure, and smoking. Agree? These are all in the cholesterol circle, correct? All of these numbers. Every one of these numbers are in the cholesterol circle. So once we found out how many had smoking and cholesterol only, blood pressure and cholesterol only, only cholesterol, then they told us that 370 had high cholesterol. Of the 370 that belong in the circle, how many have been accounted for? 23, 62, and what? 159. So to find out how many go in region five here, I did this, 370 minus the sum of 23, 62, and 159. Got 126. That's how I got the 126. I get it, but it's still a little confusing. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't know how to get four. I got five, but I didn't get six. I yeah, got... four is by far the most challenging region to say the least. Okay. All right. So the ones we have accounted for, the numbers we accounted for already are what twenty three. We accounted for the what the one fifty nine. Do you agree? We accounted for the uh, the three seventy, the ninety three, the thirty six, and the sixty two. The only other number, ladies and gentlemen, not that really has not been accounted for is the five eighty five. And this is where the mystery sets in. 585 had at least one risk factor. What is this saying to have at least one risk factor? At least one. Is that saying you could only have one risk factor? No. Oh, no, no. At least one means you could have only one, but you could also have, what, two risk factors? Or you could have all three risk factors. Do you agree? At least one means one or more, all right? So this is how I dealt with this 585. Watch how I deal with it. I don't know how many people go into what region four here. Do you agree? It's an unknown. I called it a variable X. X means unknown. And we're going to find what X is. We don't know what this is. But ladies, we know that 585 have had at least one of these three risk factors, agree? At least 585, that's what it says. Okay, how many have had exactly one risk factor? Oh, 93 had only blood pressure, 62 had only cholesterol, and what? 36 had only smoking. So do you agree that 191 had exactly one risk factor? Do we understand that? Exactly one had ex exactly 191 yeah. had exactly one risk factor. Isn't that true? Okay, yes. yeah. You 93 added plus up 62 one. plus 36. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, how many have had two risk factors? Oh, that would be 159 had two risk factors only, correct? Plus 23 had what? Exactly two risk factors. Plus, we don't know how many are in here, so I called it what? X. 159 plus 23 plus X would represent all those who have had exactly two risk factors. Are you with me? Yes. Got it. 
Now, how many have had three risk factors, all three? Oh, that's 126. Do you agree? 126 have had all three risk factors. True? Yes. Yeah. So is this making sense? How many have had exactly one risk factor, two risk factors, and three risk factors? So here's what I did. I added up the total number of people that have had one risk factor to those who have had what? Two risk factors to those who have had what? Three risk factors. I added all those up. So I got 191 plus 159 plus 23 plus X plus 26. And that better total up to how many? How many have had at least one risk factor? 585. 585. Ladies and gentlemen, I really just have to solve this equation for what? For X. That's what it comes down to. So I added 191 to 159 to 23 to 126 and got 499. My equation collapses down to this now. 499 plus X equals 585. Then how do we solve for X? This is a very basic algebraic equation. You get X by itself, you got to take this 499 over to the right side of the equation so you get X all by itself. How do you get rid of a plus? What's the inverse of addition? You subtract it. Yeah, I subtract it off 499 from both sides of my equation. And by doing this, the 499s cancel on the left, leaving you with X all by itself. That's what I want. I want to solve for X. So what's 585 minus 499? So ladies and gentlemen, how many, 86. how many of these uh, victims have suffered from high blood, only high blood pressure and smoking? 86. Now, how did I get the 105 out here? Anybody? How did I get the 105 out here? Well, how many cardiac arrest patients totally were surveyed? Totally. 690. 690. 690. And so how many of the 690 have been accounted for? Well, 585 have already been accounted for. Do you agree? Yes. Because 585 have had at least, what, one of these ailments, which means we've accounted for all these numbers everywhere. So you take 690 minus 585, and that gives you the cardinality of region 8, which gives you 105 did not have any one of these ailments. That was a tricky problem. It was a tricky problem because this region four was very difficult to populate because we had to, you know, deal with this at least, you know, uh, we had to deal with the 585 of these uh, victims uh, had at least one of these ailments. And that was tricky. So that was a difficult problem. But do we see it now? How we populate yeah. these regions? Okay. And this is on video, so it's been recorded. And that's the good news. Now we can hopefully answer some questions. Let's see if we can answer some questions here. Question A, how many survivors had exact, how many survivors had all three risk factors? All three. 126. 126. That would be the answer to A. Next question. How many had exactly two of the three risk factors? Oh, you know what? I already accounted for that. Well, wait a minute. Well, do you agree exactly two would be what? 159 added to what? 23. 23 added to what? 86. 86. And what is 159 plus 23 plus 86? 268. 268 had exactly two ailments. Do you agree? Again, 86 plus 159 plus 23 had exactly two uh, uh, of these uh, risk factors. Which What was that answer again when you added all these up? 268. 268. That would be your answer for question um, uh, B. Question C. How many had none? None of these risk factors. 105. 105. That was easy. Last question. What percentage were smokers? Of the 690 survivors that were surveyed, which per what percent were smokers? Well, the percent that smoked... We would have to go to the smoking circle and add all these numbers up here. So 36 plus 23 plus 126 plus 86. Add all those up. 271. And we're going to divide that by what? 690, correct? Yep. 271. So was that 271 divided by yeah. 690? 
Yes. All right. So get on your calculator and dial this up. 271 divided by 690. That'll give you a decimal. 0 0.392. 0 0.392. Now shift the decimal in two places to the right. Equivalent to multiplying. 39.2. 39.2% 39 of the 690 uh, heart attack uh, uh, survivors were uh, smokers. Okay. And we're done with... Uh, Cool. problem. Now, again, that was a challenging three-set Venn diagram because the wording, it got a little twisty in there with that 585 and trying to populate Region 4. I admit that was a twisty, windy road. I'm not going to give you one that's tricky like, as, as tricky as this one. It's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a lot more straightforward, okay? That makes sense, Lego, what we covered today? Yes. Okay. So even though that we didn't like get it right, do we still send it? Yes, yes. Please send it in. Okay. That's how you get paid. Okay. All right. Um, I'm out of time. Uh, I'm gonna let I you go. What's that? I have a quick question. So are we when we do these uh classwork, we sending them directly to your email, correct? Yes, and make sure in the subject line, of course, you put what? One fifteen hybrid two. Slash hybrid zero two. Please do that. Uh, that helps, you know, me to serve you more quickly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. You. Thanks, you have a good day. Okay.